Hey there YouTube, welcome back to today's project guide and today we are going to be covering how to change your clutch master cylinder. It's kind of a difficult job in the beginning because of the small space under the driver's side dash but everything goes pretty quickly and it should only take you about 45 minutes to do so. If you're driving down the street and you happen to notice that your clutch pedal gets a little soft, you start feeling a little slick substance under your shoe while you're driving down the road, it's hard to get into first or reverse gear, you might have a bad master cylinder on your clutch. So I'm going to show you where I found the bolts, the procedure that I use to take mine out and replace it, and we'll get right into it. So first thing I want to stress is make sure you go OEM or buy your replacement clutch master cylinder from a reputable dealer. I found that uh, aftermarket parts didn't quite work for me. Uh, one of the rods that goes into the master cylinder was actually about a centimeter shorter than the OEM one, so I couldn't set my clutch pedal the way it was supposed to be set. I found a eBay seller that had one for I think it was $65 and that was an OEM part straight from Japan so that was great. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is hop down underneath the dash and I'll show you what you have to disconnect and unbolt. Alright guys we're down here on the driver's side. Uh, if you look at the top of your clutch pedal you will notice that there's a rod pushing through the firewall with a little black boot, that is your clutch master cylinder. Uh, if the bottom of this has any fluid around it or there's liquid leaking down the inside of the firewall like mine did, you can probably see the staining uh, and the carpet still. It's a very slippery mess. That means that your seal is blown out in your master cylinder rod and you're going to have to replace that. Now what you're going to need to do is become three foot tall and climb up under here and one of the most difficult parts of this whole job is going to be this right here this clutch pedal has a pin going through the back of it to connect that master cylinder rod to the back of the pedal assembly okay so right there is the pin that you're gonna to have to pull the cotter pin out of on the other side actually it should be on this side uh, if you notice mine's in reverse it's really tough to get the pin back in from the other side. As long as you put it back together correctly with the uh, two little nylon washers, everything will be fine. Uh, you pop your cotter pin out and you push that steel pin out and it should free off that rod. Then what you want to do is grab yourself a 14 millimeter, I believe, and a swivel end, 3 8 swivel works great for this. Uh, you unscrew that bolt right there. So once you get this bolt disconnected, Put it someplace safe and we'll jump under the hood and disconnect from the other side. All right, so under the hood, we need to get back over here to your clutch master cylinder, which is right here. Uh, this has one more 14 millimeter bolt against the firewall. It's kind of in an awkward spot. I'll show you where that is in just a second. But what you're gonna wanna do up here is take out that bolt and that bolt and that's gonna free up the bracket holding your brake fluid reservoir on um, you're gonna want to spray this fitting right here with some penetrant make sure that you can crack it free without rounding it off I actually had a wrench slip the first time I was doing it and the best thing to use is a 10 millimeter line wrench otherwise the standard 10 millimeter wrenches will definitely round it right off you need something they can grip it and not hurt it or destroy that nut. Otherwise, you're going to be replacing hard line, and that's a real, real pain in the butt. The other 14 millimeter nut that you have to take off is way down in here. And if you look, you'll see it. It's at the back of your master cylinder. That one's kind of tough to get to. That's why I said the uh, 3 8 swivel is a great tool to have with you. It'll get around these little edges and corners and make your life a little bit easier. Uh, I keep a magnet on a stick handy as well because you never know if you're going to drop these things and if you do you don't want to have to go to the hardware store for a single nut. Once you have your reservoir unbolted you have your other 14 millimeter against the firewall disconnected and taken out and you have this hard line unscrewed and free you're going to want to go ahead and grab your pliers come down here 
to where the master cylinder reservoir connects and unhook that hose clamp, slide it off, make sure you have a couple of rags floating around because uh, the brake fluid in here is very corrosive and it will eat your paint up quick. You want to disconnect the bolt right here underneath your reservoir once you get it all taken care of. That's going to free up your power steering line. Once you get the power steering line freed, you can kind of move it a little bit out of your way. And also, I have the air conditioner still in my vehicle. So, this line right here, I just unplugged it right here. And then I could move it just a little bit. And that gave me enough wiggle room to get to this master cylinder to yank it all out. It's kind of a, a wiggling game. you got to twist it, turn it. And as you're sliding it out, you should have a gasket on this side of the master cylinder against your firewall. And you're going to want to make sure that you either grab a replacement or if it's in all right condition, you can reuse this one also. It's a little bit of a maneuver. Once you get that thing pulled out, you're going to want to take and save your reservoir because you do reuse it with the new master cylinder and you just put it back together the same way you disassembled it. The hardest part again was uh, getting the pin back in the back of the pedal on the inside of the car. That ends up being quite a procedure. So once you have that done, bolt it all back together. You're gonna wanna reconnect your line. You're gonna wanna make sure you bolt back up your master cylinder reservoir, these two bolts here. Pop the top off and this part, it helps if you have a buddy you can have them sit in the driver's seat and start pumping the pedal to bleed the clutch. And that's a very, very important part. You have to do this unless you have a speed bleeder handy. Uh, otherwise, it will not engage the, the clutch properly and it will not disengage the clutch and you will have a hard time getting into gear. That will be a nightmare situation. So always bleed after you change these parts. So at this point, you have your cylinder replaced. Your master cylinder is ready to be bled. Now what you do is you fill up your reservoir right here with your DOT3 brake fluid. Leave the cap off so you can keep an eye on that level. And you're going to want to go in, have your buddy start pumping the pedal. You're going to end up crawling under the front of your car and I'll show you exactly where to find the bleeder. It's on your slave cylinder. Alright, so if you look straight underneath the front of your car, you're going to notice there is a hard line right here with a bolt and two copper crush washers that bleeder right there is what you want to connect to. I believe it's a 10 millimeter. You're gonna have your friend pump the pedal while you crack this and bleed the air out of the system. And it doesn't hurt to do this process a couple of times. Make sure that you're on a level surface. I had a little bit of air trapped in mine and once I got it out after a second bleed everything was so much better. And I'm also gonna refer you guys to a video that you've probably seen on Jack's transmissions explaining how to set up your master cylinder rod uh, to make sure that your clutch fully disengages when you press your pedal. That's a great video. That guy is a genius, so make sure to take a look. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below if you have any ideas for the next video. Thanks a lot, guys.